Hello, carnivore hunters. I'm Rick. I'm Laura from Healthy Carnivore, a uh, registered nurse. I've been a nurse over 22 years, keto for 28, and carnivore well over five years now. Cool. So today we are going to go, I, I saw the uh, nephrologist, nephrologist and um, I, I got some lab results back that uh, I, I'm going to have Laura talk about some of these results. Um, oh, by the way, Laura, did you guys go hunting yet? Yes, I have been bow hunting a couple times. Uh, all I have seen, well, I have seen deer as soon as I left the deer stand. You know how that goes. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, I haven't shot anything yet, uh, but shotgun season's coming up uh, the week before Thanksgiving. So um, I have six tags that I fully intend on filling all of them. So we'll see. Keeping my nice. fingers crossed. Yeah, I hear you. Doug and I and my dad leave in, uh, in about a week and a half here. Uh, Doug and I both have bull buck and a bear and a bear tag and my dad has a doe and a cow so we've got a lot of tags to fill ourselves so good we'll see um yes we're going luck. <laughs> yeah we're we're going a little later than usual uh just because last year uh, during second season it was so hot and dry it was just it was not a good season for us yeah yeah uh so let's get into these labs here let me share the screen while you're doing that i'm just going to talk over um, a little bit about blood work so um, the blood work he's going to pull up is what the standard health system does for people um, this is how they generally generically i'm going to say check for people's kidneys function um, and this is based off of people who eat the standard American diet for the last hundred years or better. So um, I always tell people who are carnivore, even keto, if you're meat heavy, um, that really to check kidney numbers, you're going to want to do a cystatin C, which you'll see on here. He does have that done on this latest uh, blood work. That's going to be a more accurate as to how your kidneys are working because uh, the way our kidneys work is they filter out the impurities. Um, it's normal if you eat high amounts of protein for the BUN, creatinine, GFR, all of those to go up because that's show waste product. So that is what that stands for. Uh, blood, urea, nitrogen is your BUN, your creatinine is actually the breakdown of protein, um, which can come from muscle wasting like people who are emaciated and you know starvation those levels go up for them because they're breaking down their own protein but for us and the majority of what we eat is meat it's very hard to use these standardized standardized test to fit for what we eat because they don't set them up that way so we can look at your ranges and uh, this is what year is this last year no, this is year. this is my so this is from October eighth was the last Perfect. set of labs I had, um, right? And and my glucose shot up a little. I will confess, uh, I did have a couple of cheat days. Um, yeah. So, uh, but you know, I'm still ninety five percent carnivore, uh, so I have a feeling that this went up a little higher uh, because of cheating. Uh, let's, let's go. Those are really very, very good. I mean, I, I work with tons of carnivores, um, and even I grab my, um, lab work just to be comparable to what yours is. Yours oh, yeah. right now if is better than what my last ones were. If we were going to believe the standard American test for the carnivore pe person. So, yeah. Yeah, so my BUN looks really good, right? Uh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, and that's where I want to explain to people, this is the blood panel part of your BUN creatinine GFR. So this is what they drew from the blood. They have the urine later on that they did. So you did a urine test for them as well? I did, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, so th that makes sense, but... Just to think about downstream, 
if you are not getting rid of these products through the urine, which is why those may be a little higher because you are getting rid of them through the urine, then that back fills into the bloodstream. And then you would see these numbers be extremely high. Um, and they're not, they're good. So that tells okay. me that your nephrologist maybe needs to do some deep diving into uh, basic physiology. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, I, I can't stand this guy. I really can't because he's, uh, as I'm talking to him, I, I was honest with him about my diet and everything. And uh, very arrogant and cocky. And he, he just kind of smirks at me when I say certain things, you know, about what I'm eating or whatever. And then he's saying, well, you need to back off of the protein and and because processing protein is hard on your kidney and all this other stuff. And I, I just, it's not, it's yeah. He's a, I just, I can't stand the guy. But, yeah. Yeah. And he, and That's he's a young bad. guy. Well, and let me just say this. So I don't know if you know, one of the gals that I do meaty Mondays with her name is G Brown from hanging with the Browns. Her husband is Frederick. And in, I don't remember if it was June or July, he had a basically a hypertensive and hypotensive crisis all at one time where mm -hmm. he actually went into chronic kidney failure, acute failure stage five, which is dialysis. It was due to him for decades, five, six, seven times a week, submerging himself into the hottest bath water and then adding more hot water to it for an hour at a time. Like he was basically cooking himself. And what really? that caused him is called, yes. And, and it's not uncommon because we did a video on that where we discussed his stuff. And you wouldn't believe the number of people that said, oh, I do that all the time. And I'm just like, you know, it can cause a condition called rhabdomyolysis, which is where you rupture your cells inside. You're basically cooking yourself, which then you spill out these large proteins and potassium and things that the kidneys cannot filter out. It's too big of a molecule to get in. And it blocks it up. And so, um, I mean, thank God, you know, she, he's kind of stubborn like me and didn't want to go to the hospital, didn't want to go to the doctor. And I'm like, so she Marco Poloed me, which is just an app that you can talk back and forth kind of. And mm. um, I, I was like, no, he absolutely has to go. Even if you just start out with the walk-in clinic, just to make him happy. I knew he was going to end up at the ER, but this way she could get him there, you know, and, and get the ball started at least and get some of the testing done. They did what's called a CK test, which checks for muscle breakdown. And his is the highest I'd ever seen. It was 41,000. I've never seen over 10. Wow. I mean, that's just how bad it was. But this is the amazing thing. Thank God he was doing carnivore. He did it the whole time he was there. She would go home, get his, his steak made, bring it back to the hospital. He was in, I think, three days. A nephrologist, a younger nephrologist, not somebody that's been doing this for 40 years, told him the only reason you're still alive and the reason his kidney function came back down to like a CKD1 in the, the days basically he was there was because he ate carnivore. And I was like, hallelujah. Really? He had a brain. Yes. He he just said, absolutely. You, if you had not been doing that. You would have not been able to heal and you, he probably would have died. And, and really, I mean, to see his numbers come down, I mean, astronomically and kidneys are slow to heal when they have what they call an acute kidney injury. Okay. Which can mm -hmm. be from a wreck. It can be from alcohol. It can be from different things, a fall, things like that can cause this to happen. UTIs, bladder infections that go uncontrolled multiple times can cause that. Um, it can take a while for them to get back to a hundred percent, but absolutely 100% of the time, I can say unequivocally, you are better off to be on the carnivore diet because the amino acids are what we use to make our body. So how mm -hmm. can that be bad for us to, to eat when that's, that's what we break it down into? I, I just am right. like physiology, you know, that's what drives me crazy. <clears throat> I'm okay right. if a doctor has a different opinion 
but he's going to have to listen to, I have 33 years of knowledge. How long did he go to school? I've been, you know, eating the healthier lifestyle for 33 years. I, I have not done right. the standard American diet for 33 years. I feel like 33 years of living it myself and helping other people probably means a little bit of something compared to eight, 10, 12 years of school that was paid for by pharmaceutical companies. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's keep going. So if I can, can you see the screen by the way? Is, can, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I had to zoom in before we started here. Um, I can open one of these up if you want to look at the history, but uh, most of these are about the same from the last time we looked at them. So uh, yeah. I, I probably won't open them unless there's something you want to see. Um, okay. The, our, so the creatine uh, looks about the same. Yep, and it's uh, good. GFR. Yeah. Uh, and, and I wouldn't be worried on any of these. I, I really wouldn't. Um, especially, you know, you also have to base it on um, your condition, like how you feel, how things are working uh in your body too so you have to take that that's the other thing is they tend to run off of just what your lab work shows not what they see sitting in front of them mm -hmm. you know, that's another thing that i see with a, a lot of the american doctors is they they you know i mean i've had i have a co-worker who's got i mean her thyroid is trashed it you know it's scarred it's got lesions all over it and because her blood work stays okay they're totally fine with it. And it took her over a year of fighting to get to the right doctors that now she's going to go down and they're going to have to do an ablation and burn some of that off of there because of how bad it is. And this is something that could have been done years ago, but mm. because her levels looked okay, it was fine. Even though her pulse would go up to 200 um, for an extended period of time, which yes, huh. her heart rate. And that's, wow. that's called a thyroid storm. So when, when that happens, um, it can increase your heart rate. Blood pressure was 220 over 110. And they sent her home. They let her drive home. <laughs> An emergency wow. room. Yes. Jeez. Yeah. I know. <laughs> one, one of the, there's a few in here of the, like the sodium. And I yeah. think we may have talked about this last time. I, I'm in the normal range, but with the amount of salt <laughs> we're doing on this yeah. carnivore diet, uh, I, I expected to see that higher, but yeah. it's, it's, I'm in the normal range. The reason you're in the normal range is because you're doing the right kind of salt that has all the other minerals that unlock mm -hmm. the cell and allow you to get the salt and the water into the cell instead of just running in the bloodstream in the serum part of the blood. So when you use that properly, it's just like spark plugs and spark plug wires on a distributor cap, it's sending the electrical impulse. That's what that is for. Same thing with this. That is an electrolyte that our heart, all the muscles use, but the heart muscle, it's the most important to it. So we utilize it. So as long as it can yeah. get into those cells like it's supposed to, you will be in the right, right? I really have not had any carnivores that had switched to the right salt. I had one that was being stubborn and wanted to use up all of her Morton salt first. Hers kept going really high um, and her potassium kept dropping because they they invert. One spills, the other gets high. Um, and so, you know, once she got switched over, it was fine. But yeah, yours looks perfect. Yeah, it's funny. We had a conversation at work the other day and somebody had asked about, can you really tell the difference between Morton Salt and Pink Himalayan and Redmond's and all this other stuff? And I'm yes. like, uh, hell yes, you can. And they were like, oh, mm -hmm. I can't tell. The and it, it was a funny conversation. I, I didn't get into yeah. carnivore with those guys, but I, right. I mean, Redmond's is the best. I, I there's yeah, I like very Redmond's distinguishable. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it doesn't uh, taste like you're in a pool. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the potassium yeah, the chloride. Yep. CO2. CO2, uh, yep, which is perfect. Can you remind me, what's this anion gap? Anion gap is just kind of telling yeah. you, um, do you, can you remind me what was last time? 
Just because I'm trying to think. Uh, so doo -doo -doo, it looks like it's it's I was 15 last time, and then it's, it looks like it it was really low here back in 2020. Uh, and here's something else that I just find strange is look at how the reference range has changed over the years. Yes. And that's, I, I see that a lot too. And that's why I don't trust these, what the doctors tell you, they think it ought to be these, you know, certain, certain results, but. Well, they change them to fit their narrative. So it's like, my husband says statistics don't lie. Liars use statistics. So it's just like with that. The anion gap is the difference between your positive and your your negatively charged ion. So basically your electrolytes. So oh, okay. just saying kind of what it's just another it's just a way to make money off of people, really. It's a I don't think you really need that when you have the other testing that shows, you know. Um but, you know, it's just like the, um, your statins, I mean, 300 was normal in 80. Now they want you below 179 or, or they start losing their minds. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, funny story about that. So I, I have a recent patient who was on statins, the favorite one, um, for 37 years, did not eat any animal fat, had country crock still in his fridge the day I went to admit him, had a seven way bypass, which means they grafted around seven of his coronary arteries. I was like, I have never seen that done. I've seen five. I've heard of six. I had never seen seven. And he's sitting there and his wife says, well, they want him to stay on this statin, but they've bumped it up. I mean, it's a stupid dose, 160 milligrams. I've never seen that either. And I'm like, well, so you just keep doing more of something that didn't seem to do anything anyway? Like, does that make sense? <laughs> right. You know, it's like, why would you continue to do that? I said, you you have to do what you would want, you know, for your body. And I would talk with your doctor, but I'm like, just sit here and put it out on a piece of paper. Like, you didn't do fat. You didn't do red meat. You did vegetables, tons of fruit, breads, pasta, rice, you know, all these things. And the standard American food. And you took your 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 cholesterol lowering medication, and you ended up with a seven way bypass. So, mm -hmm. I, I can't make that make sense, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. And I'm just like, I, I, and they, they, you know, they always ask me, well, what would you do? And all I can legally say is, I wouldn't let my ex husband take a statin, and that says something. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, I took myself off two years ago. Or a year and a half ago, when, whenever I started smart. carnivore. It's very smart. Uh, very, yeah. Save the brain. Save the brain. <laughs> yeah. So calcium is normal. Calcium's phosphorus. Good. Yeah. Phosphorus. Yep. yep uh, here's, an, here's another one that kind of surprises me is, you know, again, with the, uh, with the carnivore lifestyle. I, I would expect to, let's see what the, historically that has been. I, I would have expected that to be higher. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mine's, um, mine's 11. Is it really? And I, uh, I'm fine with that because I would expect it to go up because that's what I eat is protein. Um, and I don't take in any of those other you know, macro, micro nutrients of stuff. Um, yeah. So I, I really, I wouldn't expect it to be any different. My doctor just is like, well, you're carnivore. You know, she's, she really has been educated over the last so many years. Um, and plus I, I also have a functional holistic, uh, doctor that's just seven miles away from me here. That, you know, it kind of sucks to have to pay to go to somebody like that Yeah. Uh, versus my insurance covering my other doctor. But the difference in the level of care that I get out of that doctor comparable, yeah. and it doesn't mean that, that she agrees with everything that I'm doing or do or anything like that. Although she is also a carnivore and has been for three years. But oh, good. yeah, so that's helpful. But um, 
it's that, I mean, she spends the whole hour and it's as much of me saying what I've seen, what I've noticed, what I've done over time versus her sitting there in a huff or, or giving me a smart ass look or little snide comments. Cause I can promise you, I didn't put up with that. I put up with that one time when I was 20 and then that was it. And after that, yeah. sir, your license says practicing medicine. It does not say that you walk on water. You are just a right. dude or a chick. That's it. Right. Yeah. That, that's, I need to let my kidney doctor know that too. I, he needs to be put in check. Uh, the guy's a yeah. tool. Yeah. He, um, he sounds like a tool. Yeah. Yay. So my albumin here, I think, is where Perfect. we start getting into some stuff that he had tested that I don't think mm -hmm. has ever. Well, let's just see. I don't think these have ever been tested before. Uh, maybe once before. And it's yeah, come one down. Time before. Yeah, which so is perfect. Okay. Yeah, which is, but yours are, are where we would expect them to be. This is the test that is more important to get if you are carnivore, is that cystatin C. That is going to be a more realistic picture of, of what your... Um, it basically shows how well your your kidneys are filtering, where those other ones, like I said, are just set up for people who eat the standard American diet. This is the gold standard for carnivores. It's just like how some people, I don't know if you've ran into or seen videos where somebody says, I've been doing carnivore for two years and my hemoglobin A1C went up. What's yeah. up with that? And it's like, well, that's because your your hemoglobin is living longer than just the 90 days that most people live. Um, their, their blood cells just live 90 days, their hemoglobin, and then it dies off and you start new. And that's why those, those tests are done about every three months because then you've got a new set of cells to get a picture off of. Well, they're showing that ours are living 90 or better to 120 days. So plus you're still making more. So then you have more hemoglobin so of course your number is going to go up. So people mm -hmm. are getting gly the glycated albumin test if they're worried about their hemoglobin A1C. I say that if you are eating carnivore with the occasional cheat, not, not every day, um, I, I could care less what your hemoglobin A1C is I really because your body will heal. It's just the amount of time it takes for it to heal. Yeah, and so, yeah, these have been tested twice each, it looks like, and they're within the normal range, yet they're telling me I have stage one kidney failure. And he another... Doesn't, yeah, he doesn't understand physiology. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I just am not buying it. Another thing I wanted to bring up today, but I could not get it downloaded, is they actually actually did a, a ultrasound on my kidneys. Okay. And uh, everything, they told me everything looked normal, that the blood flow huh. and every whatever else they look at. So I, yeah, I just, that be? yeah, I, big pharma <laughs> trying to make me sicker, I think. But yeah, well, basically what they're doing is, and, and for somebody like you who gets your insurance through your workplace, and I think if I remember right, you said that you guys can get like a um, like a percentage of your insurance cheaper if your markers are a certain place. Was that you that said like health wise? Do you guys get a reduction mm -hmm. in cost or no? No, I don't think that was me. Okay. I, my okay. insurance is what it is, but the same. I no do have what, good. Okay. Yeah, I do have good yeah. insurance. Well, so. Yeah, I, I used to, when I worked in factories, I was like, oh, you know, half of what you were working there for was for the insurance. And now I sit back and I think I should have just had better pay because their testing wasn't accurate for me. All they wanted to do was I felt fine. Everything looked fine. But maybe a lab was off and they're like, oh, we got to put you on the medication. You know, it was just a way of adding another diagnosis to your list. Yeah. And, and like you, you, you've probably got CKD one added to your list. And I don't believe for one second that you have that. Yeah. Uh, another thing on your lab work here is your calcium level in your, your main blood work was perfectly normal. So there's no reason to run a PTH calcium or the 
parathyroid um, hormone intact. Neither one of those needed to be ran. Those were tests that were unnecessary because your calcium level was normal. And unless you're having tetany, are you having like little muscle twitches by the eye constantly or any of that no. kind of stuff? Okay. There, there, I mean, that's two tests that really did not need to be ran. I mean, it's fine. Your insurance pays for it, but it was unnecessary. Your vitamin D looks off the chart. Great. Really? So I was, that was one of my questions for you actually, because I think this is one that has never been tested before. Nope. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they're giving us a range of 20 to 50. What is Which that? Is, nanograms per milliliter? Yes. Yes. And that, okay. Rickets can be seen in people between 13 and 20. So they're going to call the normal 20 to, that's going to be their bottom low. That is just, that's craziness. Um, my uh, vitamin D when I first, even after I've been on keto for a long time, um, I think I was 21. I am now sit around 98. Um, for even your if vitamin I was D? 110. Mm -hmm. And I'm fine with that. I'm like, great. I don't, perfect. My bones aren't going to break. I'm keeping the calcium out of my arteries. That's fine by me. You know, so here, um, here was the nephrologist's recommendation. Cause he said, if my, if the, if vitamin D goes too high, it can cause, I can't remember. Kidney stones. Oh, I'm sure he said kidney well, stones, which is. No, there was another condition. Uh, like, mm. like it could be fatal. Um, I can't remember what he said it was, but. And, and so his recommendation to me, because you and I have talked about this uh, online several times before about the K two D three, and Absolutely. so if what this if what this guy is saying is true, my plan was to take the keep continue with K two, but cut out the vitamin D or the D three. No. No D three is what starts your immune system. So shame on you for having a really strong immune system. How dare you? Okay. Good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I, this is one though, especially after him telling me all this apparently bullshit, right? Uh, yeah. I, this is one I wish I did have more history, uh, historical data on. To see where you were. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, especially this would have been a cool one, I think, uh, you know, before and after Carnivore to see what what changes yes. that we might have seen there. Yeah. So yeah. good to know. I will continue taking yeah. the, the And this vitamin is what's D. so crazy. So they must not use LabCorp. Your your labs are not through a LabCorp? It, it's, no, I think it's through Banner okay. Health. Okay. I don't, I don't the, know if you uh, have Banner where you're from. I do not. So the other thing is that, um, of course, any lab is going to have a little bit different level, but like the norm from LabCorp, which is does probably 80% of all the labs in the United States, mm -hmm. their normal range is from 30 to 100 is considered absolutely perfectly fine. For um, vitamin D? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. And they, like I said, they do at least 80% of all the labs in the United States. Quest, LabCorp, you know, you have a few of these other small ones, but um, that's generally their their ranges. But still, um, if, you, if you were some, this is the other thing. So this is where he's not looking at the whole picture of you. So... If your vitamin D level being high was dangerous, and if it worked the way he said it was, it would show that your calcium is off the charts, okay? But your mm -hmm. calcium was normal. Your your PTH, everything's normal. So you don't have ex high levels of calcium because guess why? Your K2 and your D3 are getting it out of the blood vessels so that you don't become sclerotic. And putting it out into the bone matrix for your teeth, your bones, everything like that. And then the rest you're getting rid of. Right. It's just where he's not looking at the the whole picture because that's the way he was trained. 
and it's very right. sad. You can see exactly how he was trained. And all I can hope for him is that he learns a lot from you. If he was my doctor, he'd be fired and I'd have a different one, but that's just me. <laughs> you know, um, I, and maybe you can educate him. I, I thought about firing him and going with a different one, but part of me wants to prove this asshole wrong, right? Yep. I like right. I want to yep. prove him I wrong. And I want him mm -hmm. to look at my results and go, and I want to see his jaw drop and go, How did you do this? Mm -hmm. and I, it's just the the yeah. fighting me, I guess. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Okay, here's a bunch more that I don't think have ever been tested before. And I don't like that uh, they don't have the ranges. Let, let me just double check this. Oh, actually, they have been yeah. tested before. Um, I'm at, yeah. so it looks like I'm kind of, I, I don't know what these, since it doesn't have the ranges, I don't know what any of these mean. So maybe you could help They're us. The, that's just showing you the different types of proteins that are there based okay. on what, and basically yours are going to have different, different ones in there because you eat a lot of protein. Same with mine would show up the same way because it's a lot of different proteins, but it's okay. fine. Yeah. And I, Typically, like you saw above, if it was high or low, there'd be a note here saying high or low. So I'm going to assume all these. Yeah. The alpha yep, one. P, okay. Alpha yeah. two. Just beta. more tests, more money. Right. Yep. Gamma, uh, all of that. Yep. Yep. Gamma, kappa, lambda. Sounds like a fraternity, huh? I was, huh? I was just going <laughs> to say, it sounds like college. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So this is the urine, right? Uh, actually, yes, it is. and we're we are toward the end here. So this is the other part where I had questions because, uh, the, oh, this protein normalized to create uh, eight ninety. It looks like I'm off the charts here, and it looks to me like it's gone up from the last time you and I spoke. Right, which I would expect it to, because that test is showing that they, they use the, it's where I said, statistics don't lie, but liars use statistics. It's the same way with this, is I would expect your numbers to go up if your kidneys are filtering correctly and getting rid of the extra protein that you're breaking down, because when we eat, we have waste products. Now we don't have as much and as many crazy different kinds as the standard American diet people do or the vegans or vegetarians. But what we do have is all protein. So if it wasn't in your urine because your kidneys are filtering it and getting it dumped into there, then I would maybe be a little concerned because I'd be like, well, then where is it going? Cause it has to be being broke down somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that is just another BS test to be able to go, oh, look, look at how high your numbers are. Oh, this is so dangerous. Yeah. Well, look yeah. at this. They said I was high with 45 and now I'm at 202. Like that's huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And yeah. and back here, I was, I, I mean, I've always been high. It looks like going right. clear back to 2016 and probably before that. Um, yeah. And you know, and we've talked about that before, genetically, some people's kidneys, I mean, all of our body parts may work a little bit different than what the average person does, because we don't know, you know, genetically, what happened while your mom was pregnant that could lead to certain things. Uh, your father's influence genetically. I mean, there are things that genetically can have you have a little bit of difference on that anyway. But eating the proper human diet will allow your body to heal those things to the point of where they can be healed. You know, so you may always be somebody that has a little bit higher numbers on that because you did prior to even doing carnivore. But mm -hmm. I think the only way to heal the body is to properly fuel it and, and allow it to heal. Because if we quiet down, just think about this, at, like I'm a gearhead. So just think about this 
I mean, if I try to put three different types of gasoline and four different weights of oil in my car, it's like, what the hell is going on? What's well, the same thing with our body? If we're putting in 16 different types of foods and all these crazy chemical concoctions of franken food and food dyes and all these other additives and junk, mm -hmm. your body don't know what to do with it. But at least, you know, when you're trying to heal yourself, if you're putting in the proper human nutrition, that allows your body to kind of quiet down and not have to be trying to do all these chemical breakdowns of these things that it has no idea what the hell it is. And it can work on what it knows from our past to, to break down so that it can do the things it needs to do to fix the body. Cause our bodies are absolutely made created to heal themselves. If we quiet it down, stop all the crap coming into it as much as possible and allowing it to heal itself. That is exactly what it was for. And unfortunately, as we've talked about before, when medicine really got hijacked in like 1910, that was the end of the, the doctors being trained, except for some of the holistic functional. And even those, you've got to vet those too, of knowing that the body is very smart. It knows what it needs to do to, to get itself back to what they call homeostasis, which is perfect, you know, right where you want to be. Um, but unfortunately, you know, since 1910, the docs have been trained on medicine, drugs, medicine, drugs, medicine, drugs, uh, you know, test, 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 uh, and not really paying attention to the patient. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm really, I'm a little bit optimistic that that's going to change because you're starting to see some congressional hearings uh, and, yes. and we've got some people coming up hopefully here in the near Casey future and Callie means what's that Casey and Callie means it's a brother and sister. He used to work for like big pharma and she is a Harvard trained doctor that walked away from her practice. Um, I believe she was either an ear or an eye surgeon, um, but they have been before Congress. They've been on Tucker. They've been on Joe Rogan, some stuff like that. And they really go deep. The brother goes in deep as to just how corrupt the whole system is and how big pharma is in, involved in the food. And, and it's just, it blows your mind. But I do think that is getting more to the forefront of, uh, you know, I think it, it all kind of depends on who's in power as to which direction that goes. So I guess yeah, we'll I, see in a, a while. <laughs> I, yeah, I totally agree. Um, Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm a little optimistic that that we could see some changes for the better. Uh, you know, especially when it comes to our processed foods and what they're made of. I, I think, I think we could see our our box of tricks. You know, it's still not going to be a healthy option, but it'll be better than what it is now. Yeah, it doesn't need to have 16 colors in it that are fake, that are not out in nature. And are carcinogenic, so. <laughs> yeah, well, and the thing that always made me mad, and I'm kind of like you are with your doctor, where you're like, I'm going to prove him wrong. That's one of the reasons I, I started keto in 1990, is after I read all these old medical books and the veterinarian books and stuff, and I thought, these assholes have done this on purpose. This was not an accident that our food mm -hmm. has been poisoned, that they they have killed the our ground where I live in Illinois. Your yard may be alive, but those fields are as dead as can be. There is no life in that dirt. I mean, it's nothing. Yeah. And, and that wasn't done on accident. You know, th that has not been done accidentally. Everything like that has, and without being conspiratorial, it is just the way they wanted things to go. Um, because then that fits into their medical industrial complex of get you on medicine. And they love that they're getting, they're getting children as young as eight and 10 on Ozempic. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's going to be a lifelong medication for them that is going to do. Yeah. I, I, yeah. any doctor that, that puts a child on that, I just infuriates me. But the whole reason I cleaned out my diet that that day after that doctor's appointment and reading up on everything was because I was like, I'm not going to pay to eat your poison food 
so that I can get sick and have to buy your poison medicine. Bullshit. If I'm going to do that. Nope. <laughs> and so I was kind of like, no, I'm not going to do that. And I, and I was able to show him, even though he didn't like it, that, Oh, I guess you can heal yourself by what you put in your mouth. And he didn't like it. It took him several years after his bypass um, to, to start keto, you know, and now he's 205 pounds and looks amazing. But you know what? He still prescribes his patients that he no longer takes. Statins. Statins. Yep. Yeah. That's too bad. I asked him, I know. Cause I said, you, are you still taking your statin? He goes, absolutely not. It didn't mean no good. And I said, but you're still prescribing it. And he goes, well, I have to under the standard of care for the facility he works. That is part of their, their protocol. And if you don't fit it, if you don't do it. And I said, can't you just type it in that you talked about it and leave it alone? And he's like, yeah, all it takes is one person. That's a, you know, a Karen to uh, turn you in and it's over. And I'm like, sad. It's too bad. Yeah. I, I, uh, I have a, relatively new uh family doctor my normal doctor and he i've i think we've talked about this before i've told him everything i've been doing the weight i've lost and all this other stuff and and uh, i don't think he necessarily agrees with the carnivore lifestyle so much but he he flat out told me one day when i was walking out of his office he said i wish all my patients would do what you're doing and I, and, yep. and when I told him that I took myself off the statins, he was like, that's awesome. Good for you. Yep. Uh, yeah. But you, you could tell like he was picking he his words careful. very carefully. Yes. And I don't, yes. I don't like, you know, that sad. Yeah. yeah, it is. But it's, it's too bad. And it's the other thing that I tell people where I live, luckily there are still some physicians who have stayed out by themselves. Like they have mm. their own standalone practice. They're not under a healthcare system or a hospital system, which is just corporate. Um, but they, you know, and they can stay true to their old styles, which is more of like, well, this, this isn't really a medicine. This is over the counter or, you know, um, you could do this. And a friend of mine, that's a colleague of mine had this work on a patient. Do you want to try it? We used to do that. I mean, yeah. in the seventies, we did that all the time. I can remember my doctor giving my mom some ideas. My mom thought he was absolutely nuts and he was right on and it yeah. didn't have to come through the pharmacy and he was correct. But now, yeah. unless they're on their own, they they are not allowed to use their brain. And so my whole thing is, why would I go half a million dollars or better in debt to go through all the medical school just so a computer uh, logarithm tells me what I can diagnose you with and what I can prescribe you with. Why go to school? Like, can't you just get on there and type in the person's stuff and it, it'll spit out the diagnosis and then it'll spit out. These are the meds that they could use. Why do you need to go to medical school? What a waste. Yeah, no doubt. Is, uh, is there anything on the, on my lab results that you wanted to, oops. I, that you want, I really, yeah, I really think you're on the right path. Um, I think there, there, there are going to be times where you might see, you know, changes in those. There again, really, except for the cystatin C, um, I really would not be super concerned. I'd keep an eye, make sure that that's, you know, in range. Um, but even at that. We go off of these labs thinking that this is the end all be all with the results that are set up for standard American diet people for mm -hmm. one. And for two, that's what your blood was that day. Your blood can be completely different in six hours and have, I mean, I showed a 200 point change in my cholesterol in one day. Yeah. Now, how can that be? You know, and right. my doctor had to go, oh, cause I did that on purpose to show her. I, I fasted, I ran super crazy amount, went and had my lab work done, and it was 200 points higher than it was the very next day when I was only fasted 10 hours. I did not exercise, and I just went down there regular, basically, and it was 200 points different, and they used the same lab. Yeah, so well, and say, it's like, you know. Yeah, and it's like my glucose level. I would, When I saw that at 113 milligrams per deciliter, they're saying 
uh, the high end is 106. So I'm, I was, I was really surprised to see that. But like I said, I did have a, a couple of cheat days and that just goes to show <laughs> when you have a cheat day and you're eating a tortilla or whatever, Mexican, cause it, I think it was Mexican yep. food and, uh, Man, it's just it it wrecks you like that. Yep. And, and so, if you did that blood test two days later, it might be a hundred. You have no idea because you hadn't had anything like that for maybe a week at that point. You know, stuff like that can can make a big difference in, in um in the way the the levels are. And I I always tell people that is such a quick snapshot. You know. That's that's why I really like the cystatin C. I like the glycated albumin instead of the hemoglobin A1C for somebody that's been on carnivore longer than six months. I like the coronary calcium test. I like the CAC mm-hmm. scoring. Yep. Um, and, and so really, to me, um, and CT angiogram, if you want to look for the soft plaque, um, is another test that you can have. But really... I haven't seen anybody with a good CAC score that they needed to worry about that. And, and I mean, I have, I've had somebody that had 2,500 for a CAC score, 2,500. Wow. Jeez. So now if you were a regular cardiologist and you saw that, you would think, oh my God, this lady needs to have like stents put in, but mm-hmm. she passes all of her um, stress test. They did, um, they went in and did a heart cath. She doesn't have blockages. So why is that calcium showing up on there? Um, But she had osteoporosis before starting on the K2D3, which she had only been on about three months when she had that first one done. So she's going to do it again and we'll see how much has been pulled from that. Um, But she has no shortness of breath. She can do five, six flights of stairs without getting out of breath. And I think that's pretty good for somebody that's almost 70. Um, And I'm like, there's no way. That's one of those where they're looking at the test results and they're not paying attention to, she's great. I mean, she's got good color. I mean, I've seen people that I'm like, holy crap, you're gray. You know, know, it's a funky, dusky color. Okay, I can tell that they've got some blockages, um, but, you know, her doctors were completely freaking out, and um, she did a couple, uh, she does the K2D3, she eats carnivore, and then she did these um, infusions at an infusion center, I think it was called EDK, and um, it's where they, they're putting specific vitamins and nutrients into IV that also help kind of chelate, it's called chelation where mm-hmm. it helps to pull that out too. So I think with that combination, we'll see. But I said, I mean, if you're feeling great, what do you do? I mean, and you pass <laughs> right. all of the physical stress tests. I, I say, keep doing what you're doing because, you know, you made it to almost 70. And I, cause I had never heard of anybody that high, you know, I was 368. Right with my first one and then zero and I'll get another one probably next year. That way mm-hmm. I will have been carnivore. I'm just see, I was two and a half years before I'm five and a half. So I'll be about six and a half years and we'll see if there's any change. I do not expect there to be any, I do not expect my number to be above zero. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to next year myself. Uh, Cause you know, you I, every test I've done, and I've gotten a lot more than normal over 2024. And I, right. I think I've talked to you about every single one of them, including the one we mm-hmm. did today. And uh, mm-hmm. so I, I'm getting all those tests done again uh, next year. I, I'm going to see the nephrologist next October. Uh, hey, so I'm so scared. Oh. Think about that for a minute. So just think about what you said that your your vitamin D is so scary that it could cause you some crazy kidney to something that, that could kill you, but I'll see you in a year. Really? <laughs> That's, That's a great point. The, I mean, think about it. It's like going yeah. to in your car in and you've got a cracked head and you're like, I can smell brown <laughs> sugar inside my, my, Oh, it's fine. We'll just see you next year and we'll, we'll put a new head. I mean, come on. That's it's a great point. Crazy. That is a great point. <laughs> All right. Well, um, 
let me know how you do hunting this year. Uh, and if, if yeah. you have any cool stories, hopefully, hopefully Doug and I'll have some cool stories and maybe yeah, we could definitely. share Take them the on, uh, yeah. So, Absolutely. all right. Well, it was great seeing you again. It's been a few months yes. since the last time you and I talked. So, uh, it has. I'm it's sure, been busy. Oh, tell me about it. I've been very yeah. busy. So, um, yeah. anyways, uh, Thanks for joining us, everybody, and we'll talk to you all soon. See ya.